Hi there. Welcome to the English class. What are we going to do today? Unit 3, Reading B, Another Woman. Before we start discussing this poem, I would like to talk to you about what the title means. This poem is about a woman, but what she's going through and how the society has treated her, it seems like we have treated her like she's just one among the thousand million women that live in our society. It looks as if we don't care what's happening to them. We don't seem to remember that they are individuals too. Facets of a lady. What does facets mean? Any object that has many sides to it, each side is called a facet. And you all know a woman, a lady, has many facets. What all is she? She's a mother, she's a sister, she's a daughter, she is, uh, she also plays various roles in your life, is it not? As a teacher, wherever you come across a woman, you are seeing a different facet of her. So let's understand that a woman plays a very important role in our society, in our life, yes? So let's see what the poet is trying to tell us through this poem. I'll read it, read it along with me. This morning, this beautiful bride, this morning she bought green methi. What is methi? A green leafy vegetable in the market, choosing the freshest bunch. A wife, a mother always wants to make the best meal in the world for her family, yes? So she chooses the freshest bunch and she picks up a succulent white radish. Imagine the crunch it would make between her teeth. The sweet, sharp taste. She was imagining what a wonderful dish she could make out of that wonderful fresh white radish. But she then puts it aside, thinking it an extravagance. Extravagance means reckless spending. Spending money, a lot of money, unnecessarily on something. So she found that white radish too expensive. Let's see why. Thinking it an extravagance, counted her coins out carefully. That's the problem. She had just a little money with her and she wanted to spend it wisely. She tied them. Usually, women have a habit of tying the few coins they have in the sari tip as a knot. She counted her coins out carefully, tied them a small bundle into her sari at her waist, came home. So this was the scene. A wise lady who wants to do the best for her family, but she couldn't because of the money constraint that they have. So she comes home. What's welcoming her at home? Faced her mother-in-law's dark looks. What does dark looks here mean? Her mother-in-law was a spiteful lady, always troubling her daughter-in-law, blaming her for things that she is not responsible for. For example, she would blame her daughter-in-law for not bringing in dowry, much money into the family. So she faced her mother-in-law's dark looks, but she did not bother much because looks like she's used to it every day. So what she does, she took the leaves, chopped them, her hands stained yellow from the juice. She goes ahead with her work of making, preparing lunch. Her hands stained yellow from the juice. She cuts an onion, fine and cook the whole thing in the pot above the stove. So she is doing her duty, no matter how she is treated in that house. Shielding her face from the heat. In villages, you have a, a wooden sticks fire stove, not the regular one you see in cities. So she, the, when the fire is blowing out, she was face, uh, shield, shielding her face from the heat as she cooked the food in the pot. The usual words came and beat their wings against her. Who's giving these harsh words at her? Her mother-in-law. Now, here there is an aspect called personification used. Let's see where. 
the usual words came and beat their wings against her. Do words have wings? Can they come and beat against you? Personification is where a non-living thing is treated as a living thing. So here the poet is trying to tell you that the words the mother-in-law spoke was so harsh that they felt like an annoying insect hovering around her and flapping her, its wings against her and hurting her. Here personification has been used. The money spent, curses heaped upon her parents. The she was cursing her and saying, oh, you must have gone into the market and spent all the money on something that's not at all necessary. Is that what happened? No. She would curse her parents. Your parents are the reason you were born. That is the reason you've come into our family. All these curses were hurled at her, who had sent her out to darken other people's doors. She's saying her parents sent her into the world to ruin other people's lives. She crouched. Who is she? The daughter-in-law. What is crouching? Crouching means huddling up, bending and folding your knees. She crouched as usual on the floor beside the stove. As usual means this happened every day in her life. Every day she had to bear this spiteful woman and every day she would quietly crouch, sit and do her work. She crouched as usual on the floor beside the stove. When the man came home, who could it be? The husband. When the man came home, she did not look into his face, nor raise her head. Why is that so? Even today in society, there are many families where the woman, especially the daughter-in-law or the youngest daughter, should never raise her head in front of a man. That is treated as disrespect. Leave alone speaking in front of them, they're not even supposed to lift their head and maintain eye contact. Yes, that's what happens in reality. So she did not look into his face nor raise her head, but bent her back a little more. Can you imagine why she crouched even more? She was terrified of her mother-in-law, but when her husband entered, there was more fear inside her heart. She didn't know what to expect next. Most probably, she was a victim of domestic abuse in this house. So the moment the man entered, she was terrified that she might be given some blows. She was scared, so she crouched even further, her, but bent her back a little more. Nothing gave her the right to speak. Imagine you live in a house, in a society where your words have no value, your feelings have no value. That was the kind of life she was living. She watched the flame hiss up and beat against the cheap old pot, the flame of the stove, those wooden sticks. It's called the chula, where there's a brick and inside which wooden sticks are placed. They're put on fire and food is cooked on it. So the flames hissed up and beat against the cheap old pot. Here too, personification has come up. Can a flame hiss and beat? But here, that's what the poet has used. A wing of brightness against its blackened cheek. Whose cheek? The pot's cheek. Personification. So a wing of brightness, that means the flame blackened the side of a pot due to the cooking process. This was a house she had been sent to. The man she had been bound to. Bound how? In marriage. The future she had been born into. That means this was her new life. So when the kerosene was thrown, what do you think happened just now? Kerosene was thrown on the daughter-in-law. Who do you think did that? Whom was referred to just before this para when the man came in? Remember, the wife did not even lift her head, so she did not know what the man was carrying. What was he carrying? He was carrying a can of kerosene. 
and that kerosene was poured on this poor girl. So when the kerosene was thrown, just a moment of surprise, she was doing her work and she was like, what's that on me? A brilliant spark, the man lit a matchstick. It was the only choice that she had ever known. What is the choice her husband and mother-in-law are giving her right now? The choice to choose death. Another torch blazing in the dark. The woman was on fire. She was blazing like a torch in the dark. Another woman. How sad. We shield our faces from the heat. Now, this is what we are doing. A little earlier, she was shielding her face from the heat of the stove where she was cooking food. But here, what is society doing? We are shielding our face from the heat of such a situation. We are letting women be tortured and killed in this manner. This is common. It must be a little upsetting for you to hear. But this happens in our society. And what are we doing? We must not shield our face and look the other way. We must not let every woman be just another woman in society. We must stand up. We must make our voice be heard and prevent such things from happening. So let's learn a little about the poet. About the author? Miss Imtiaz Darkar. She was born in Pakistan, but she grew up in Europe. She is a very talented poet and she also received the Queen's Gold Medal for Poetry in Britain. She was born in Lahore in Pakistan in 1954 and was brought up in Glasgow, Scotland. She is ranked on par with some of the famous poets of India. So she keeps visiting India. She keeps visiting Pakistan. Her poems usually revolve around human relations and the situation of human relations in society today. As you have seen, her poem, Another Woman, is a perfect example of what she does. She gives issues, social issues, a voice through her poetry. She's not only a poet, but also a painter and an accomplished documentary filmmaker. Her collections of poetry include, maybe you can read them sometime in future, Parda, Postcards from God, and I Speak for the Devil, the terrorist at my table, that sounds interesting, and leaving fingerprints. So remember, we must respect all facets of a lady. A lady is our mother, our sister, our wife, our daughter. Yes, let's respect them because with them, we have a family. Always remember that. That was a very thoughtful poem. Don't get overwhelmed by the tragedy in it. Just understand that we have to bring some changes in society to make it a better place for some people. Do not discriminate. See you soon in the next class.